Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I have already shown you how to install many Linux applications on your Chromebook using the native Linux support. The thing is, almost every time that involves like downloading stuff from a website and then going into the terminal and typing a bunch of commands to get it to install. Today, I'm gonna to show you a way to make that much, much easier and we're gonna install a Linux app store on your Chromebook in the native Linux support. You're not gonna to have to go into developer mode or anything shady like that. This is gonna allow you to install a large selection of applications in a graphical store, just like on like Mac OS or Windows. You can search for your applications, browse through categories, and one click install to install these applications. I'm gonna show you how to install two different ones, show you what they look like and how they work, and let you make the decision on which one you wanna use. The only other thing is I wanna say, just because these app stores are running on your Chromebook, it doesn't necessarily mean that every single application in that app store is gonna work in the uh, native Linux support on Chrome OS. I'm gonna show you how to get the store on there, and honestly, the vast majority of applications will work just fine, but that Linux support in Chrome OS is still beta, so there's some applications that will not work. With that out of the way, let's jump right onto the Chromebook. All right, so here we are on the Chromebook desktop, and the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on Linux beta support. So if you already have Linux set up on your Chromebook, you can skip this section. So we're just gonna go into our settings and then look for Linux beta down here. If you don't see that, try doing an update on your Chromebook, but there's a possibility that your Chromebook may not uh, support it or it may be turned off if you're using something like a school Chromebook or something like that. Um, but if you have Linux beta, we're just gonna click turn on and hit next, and then you can uh, select your your username in here. So I'm just gonna select leave uh, YouTube, and we're gonna set a custom size. You can do whatever you want on here, depending on how big the storage is on your Chromebook. By default, it's five gigabytes. I'm gonna do 20 gigabytes because I want to install install more applications. So I'm just gonna hit install, and then this is gonna take a few minutes to download all the components it needs and set it up, and then when it's done, it'll open a uh, command prompt and we can do the rest of this tutorial. So I'm gonna stop this right now and then come back when this is all complete. All right, so Linux native support is all set up on our Chromebook and it brought us to the command prompt. This is using the Linux terminal, automatically opened up. I just zoomed in a little bit. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is do a sudo apt update. This is gonna go and look for any updates for our system. And then we want to do a sudo apt dist dash upgrade. That's gonna upgrade uh, the distribution, the core components for us, if there's any that need it. And we wanna make sure to do that so that we can get all the latest and greatest components for our install. Again, I'm just gonna let this run. This takes a few minutes and then I'll come back when it's all complete. Okay, so that update is all done. Now we're ready to install. Now there are two different software centers or app stores or whatever you wanna call it uh, that I'm gonna show you today. One is the KDE Discover and one is the GNOME uh, Software Center. They both let you install applications with a, a visual interface, but they handle it a little bit differently. Um, they're both slightly different looking and it's really just a matter of preference which one you wanna use. I'm gonna show you how to install both of them because it's really easy to install either one. Let's start with the GNOME Software Center. And just as a side note, this is spelled GNOME, but typically in the Linux world, it's uh, pronounced GNOME. So just go with it. Um, so we're gonna do a sudo apt install um, GNOME dash software and GNOME dash package kit hit enter. It's going to go and look for all the components for that. We're going to hit yes to install that stuff. That's going to take a little bit to install. And again, I will just skip to the end when this is all complete. All right. So that installation is all complete. And if we go into our menu here and go to our Linux apps, we can see that software is in here. Now, what, the first time we launch this, this is probably gonna be blank. It's probably not gonna show any software in here. And it doesn't. Don't be alarmed about this. For some reason, uh, it downloaded all the software, but it didn't apply. And you actually have to restart your Chromebook 
before the applications show up in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and come back. All right, so here we are back on the Linux desktop and I'm gonna go into my menu here and go down to software, launch that. And I'm actually kind of glad this happened because sometimes it happens where even after the restart, there's no applications uh, that show up in here. So what we're gonna do is just go into the Linux apps again, we're gonna launch terminal and we're gonna do a sudo apt update. And then we're gonna restart our Chromebook again. All right, so here we are back on the desktop now. If we go into our Linux apps folder and launch software, give it a second to start up here. So now we can see that it's populated with our applications. Now, sometimes it works with just a restart. Sometimes you have to do the sudo apt update and then restart. So, um, you know, your mileage may vary. So I'm kind of glad that it didn't work the first time in this video so I could show you how to fix it. But anyway, now that we're in here, you can go to these different categories and you can browse for your application um, and then install it. You can search for stuff. So say we want to install the, uh, GIMP image editing software, we can type in GIMP. Uh, we get the GNU image manipulation program, and then we can just click install right here, and it's gonna install it for us. It takes a little while, so I'm probably gonna speed up through this, and, uh, and then I'll launch it real quick and show you how to install the uh, KDE Discover application store. While this is installing, I wanted to point out one thing. So. In this application, it says it's installing, it's at 93%, but it doesn't really give you a good progress bar. When we do discover, that's one thing you're gonna see is that it gives you much better feedback when you're installing applications. So that's actually one thing that I like better about uh, discover than I like about the GNOME Software Center. All right, so that is all installed. And as you can see, we can click launch right from the application here or if we go into our menu again and go to the Linux apps, we can see that it's right here. We can launch it from there and it launches just fine. Now, like I said before, at the beginning of the video, just because an application is in this store doesn't mean it's gonna install well in Linux on your Chromebook. Not every application works because that Linux support is still kind of in beta and not every application is supported. So now let's go and install the KDE Plasma Discover. Now the way we're gonna install the Discover application is very similar to how we installed the GNOME Software Center. We're gonna go into our terminal and we are going to do a sudo apt install plasma-discover. Again, it's gonna go out and find all the components that we need, and then we can hit yes to install. Now you don't have to install both of these. I'm only installing both of them to show you how it works and you know to kind of help you make a decision on which one you wanna use. It doesn't hurt to have both installed, but you don't need to install both of them. The thing is with Plasma, when you first launch it, you may have the same issue that we had with the GNOME Software Center where the applications may not show in there, but if you do a sudo apt update and uh, one or two restarts, then the application will be populated with the you know apps that are available to install just like with the software center. All right, so Discover is all installed and just like we did with the GNOME software center, we can go into our Linux folder and we have Discover right there. We can launch it. And here we go. This is what Discover looks like. It functions similarly to how the GNOME software works, but uh, just looks very different. This is some you know, featured applications, and then you can go into the different categories. Now, it has much more granular categories than GNOME software did, uh, which I kind of like that as well. And you can also do a search. So say we wanted to install something like LibreOffice, could search for Libra and we see all the different um, applications that have to have Libra in the name or in the description. 
Uh, so say we want to install Libra Office Writer, we can just click install on that. And we can see down in the tasks, it shows the status. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. This shows you a much more useful status than the GNOME software did. This actually has a ticking taskbar and shows you, you know, how uh, the installation is progressing versus just kind of a taskbar that jumps to different segments. You know, it might go from 0% to 40% in GNOME software where this is kind of a, a real-time ticker. So again, I'll let this run and then uh, just show you what that looks like as well. Again, this is just gonna put it into our Linux apps folder. So now that is all installed, but one thing I forgot to show you is if you want more details on any of these things, you can click into them and get the information and uh, you know all the details of the, the package, just as you could in GNOME software. I just forgot to show you that before. And if you go into the installed area, it'll show you all the applications that have been installed and even the ones that you installed with GNOME software. So we can see that we have GIMP in here that we installed with that other application. So we can go into here and we can launch it right from here or, you know, even easier. Again, it puts it into the Linux apps folder and we can just launch LibreOffice Writer directly from that icon. And now we get into our word processor and it works just fine. Um, once these applications are installed, it doesn't care how they were installed. So, you know, even though we installed these with two different um, package managers, the, the core install is exactly the same. So there's no problem with launching these applications together. So you can move these and treat them just like Windows. You can do split screen uh, because it's using that native Linux support. Now, which you use is totally up to you. They both function kind of the same. I mean, they, they, on the back end, they function exactly the same. It's the front end that's a little bit different. My personal preference is Discover just because it gives you a little bit better feedback on what's being installed, but they both work just fine. And again, I wanna stress that just because an application is in here does not may, mean it's gonna work. I need to stress that because I always get uh, confusion with that, uh, with when people watch my videos, they assume that when I show them how to install steam or something like that, all the steam games are going to run. That's not the case. This is a portal to these applications, but it's still going to depend on the support of your Chromebook. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down in the comment section or ask me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm happy to answer questions on there as well. If you found this useful or informative, please hit that thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.